Good morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee and Chat with Hallie Bridgman. I'm so happy you could join me this morning. I have my water because last week I told you I'm fasting for the month of April, so no coffee for me. Um, I'm coming to you from my car somewhere in Indiana. We were driving home last night from Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where we had been visiting my friend Anne Marie, who I met 10 years ago blogging as Hallie the Homemaker. She blogged as Household Diva 6. And we became really good friends and for the last 10 years have done uh, corresponded in email and Facebook and finally for the first time ever got to meet. Uh, we have several mutual friends because it's a small army and so it was wonderful to spend the weekend with her and her family. Anyway, so on the way home last night in the middle of Illinois, this terrible ice storm hit and uh, we were doing fine until the ice became snow and we lost sight of the road and we could see five feet in front of us and it was just hazardous and cars were going off the road all around us and we finally just decided to stop and spend the night so we're making our way back home now uh, so Greg is driving the boys are behind me they're suffering from spring allergies so we're ignoring any coughs and hacks and we're gonna talk about Easter all right so much like uh, I do Christmas with no Santa, no imagery of Santa. Uh, we have really low-key Christmas with a big focus on the Jesse tree devotion with a daily ornament that tells us about uh, how the whole Bible brings us to Christ's birth and the promise of the good news. Well, the Easter season is another thing that we don't engage in anything uh, traditional so we don't do Easter bunnies we don't do eggs uh, we celebrate Passover and you know when Jesus was in his last supper Jesus's last supper was the Passover meal he was that's what he was celebrating and so we celebrate the Passover and the way that the Passover is done for people who come at it from a messianic which is a Christ following tradition is the entire Passover meal talks about how Jesus Christ was the Passover lamb in the uh, in the imagery of the of the feast, and so when the Israelites were being uh, rescued from the Egyptians, God was sending the plagues, and Moses was there speaking God's words. One of the last, the last night that they were there, they killed the lamb and they put his blood on the thresholds of the doors, and that's what protected them from the angel of death that came through Egypt and killed everyone who, or killed the firstborn of every family that didn't have the blood covering on the door, and uh, and then they left, and that's when that's when Pharaoh finally released the Israelites from slavery. And so in the Passover, it's, it talks about, it brings the imagery of Christ being that Passover lamb, that his blood covers us and protects us. And it's this beautiful thing that, that we look forward to celebrating every year. And so for us, Passover began the night of the 30th and it will go for 10 days. And during that time, we'll have a feast. Of course, we're fasting and so our feast will be vegetarian. But, uh, and with unleavened bread, and we will go through the Passover ritual and celebrate Christ's sacrifice and understand the beauty and the uh, wonder and the humbleness of being able to receive that sacrifice from God. And so we don't think that the Easter bunny or Easter eggs really have a part in that. We don't appreciate their origins and we don't bring them into our celebration and so for Easter our family only recognizes and acknowledges that Jesus resurrected on the third day after being put into the ground on the third day he rose again and that's what we celebrate is Christ's resurrection his triumph over death his uh, his per the perfection of his sacrifice that covers our sins and that's what we focus on so we don't do like gifts or anything for the kids I did buy them some chocolate crosses because I like chocolate <laughs> and they like chocolate and they were there uh, and uh, we 
we don't we don't decorate eggs or anything like that. So that's our Easter. Uh, and, oh, we also do this thing called Resurrection Cookies, which are really neat. And I'll post the link of it on my website to the recipe. But basically, it's a meringue cookie. And so what we do is we go through Bible verses through each step of, of doing the cookie. So you beat the eggs and Jesus was beaten and you put a little salt in for the sweat of Jesus and there's uh, you add some vinegar because they give him vinegar to drink. And you go through this whole process and then you have a meringue cookie that's a mound and you put it in the oven overnight. So you heat the oven up to a certain degree and then you turn the oven off and put the cookies in the oven. And then we seal the oven like they sealed Jesus' tomb. And then in the morning, you bite into the cookie and it's hollow. It's empty inside like the tomb was empty. And so it's something that we've done every year with the kids as a way of just um, reading the verses over and over again of the crucifixion of Christ. And then the triumph on Easter morning of the fact that the tomb was empty. So, uh, so that's our Easter, and we're, we didn't do the resurrection cookies this weekend because we were in a hotel, but we'll do them tonight, and we're really looking forward to that. And we'll have the Passover meal one night this week. And uh, I hope you have a great week. I hope you had a really great. Easter weekend. My kids are on spring break this week and baseball season starts and so we begin the craziness of that lifestyle. And uh, I will see you next Monday. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye.